blessed today. Yes, I'm in the glory land, the glory land way. I'm in the glory land, the glory land way. I'm in the glory land, the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way grow is clearer for I'm in the glory land, the glory land way. We stood and called the gospel call today. by singing from our hymn book, hymn number 198. God is here and that to bless us. While the spirit's quickening power, see the cloud already bending, wait to draw the grateful shower. Let it come, O oh Lord, we pray thee, let a shower of blessing fall. We are waiting, we are waiting. Oh, revive the heart of all. We are singing all the four verses.
Amen. The last song before prayer is 251. We are singing the three verses sitting down and the fourth, the fourth verse we shall stand up to sing after which we shall be led in prayer. One day, organ to introduce the body. Sister Alice Ogunbeson to please come forward and lead us in congregational prayer. Our Lord and our God, Amen. we bless your holy name. Amen. Tonight, God of revival, we give glory to your holy name. Amen. Father, accept our thanks. Amen. Father, we thank you for the morning blessings. Yes. You have brought us again to come and bless us. Yes. Wonderful Jesus. Yes. Come and accept our thanks. Amen. Lord of heaven, all that we need tonight is revival. Yes. Father, come and revive every one Amen. of us. Revive the young ones. Amen. Revive the aged. Amen. Revive every one of us, oh Lord. Amen. We want this altar to be inspired. Amen. We want everybody that will come here to be inspired. Amen. To pray. Amen. Lord, come down. Amen. Jehovah, come down. Amen. Tonight, come and say, sanctify souls. Amen. Bless us with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Amen. There are some in their homes now. They will think the, the service is on, but they are sick on their sick bed. Lord, touch them with your healing hands. Amen. Lord, raise them up. Amen. Some manage to come. Amen. Lord, internal heaven, in the evening time, in those days, they brought the sick people to you, and you heal them all. Tonight, those that managed to come, Lord, come and heal them. Amen. Jehovah, come and heal them. Amen. Mighty God, come and heal them. Amen. 
Our children will soon start their exam. Our, our students, they will soon start their final exam. God of all wisdom, impart wisdom into them. Give them brilliant success. All those people that are listening on us, far and near. Father, bless every one of us tonight. We want to go home with your blessings. Do this for us, for we pray in Jesus' name. We heartily welcome all of you who are physically present at this our evening revival and evangelistic service, and all those who are connected to us on the web, uh, website. And it is our earnest prayers that tonight Jesus will not pass you by. Yeah. We want to inform you that our internet channel is open 24 7 and we will request that you access our rich library for spiritual resources the library is so rich that whatsoever thing you need you will find there please use this medium our schedule of service during the week is as follows by the grace of God, Monday through Friday, 5.30 every morning, there will be early morning prayer meeting here on the campground for the residents and those who stay around the campground. 6 to 8, by the grace of God, we have our prayer retreat. And in the evening, we have evening, um, evening prayer meeting 6 to 7. But on Wednesday, there is our Bible study. Please take advantage of our Bible study by making sure you attend. Next Sunday, by the grace of God, in the morning, our little children will have their service beginning at 8.30 a.m. when they begin to learn new songs. Adult Sunday school will hold at 9 o'clock. Children's service, 9.40. Devotional service, 10.45 a.m. And revival and evangelistic service, just as we are doing now, we will hold it at 5 p.m. We also want to enjoin you to please, when you receive any blessings from God, endeavor to record your blessings with our ushers. And those, our internet audience, you can use our channel, www.apostolicfaithworker.org. Please, your record, your recording of blessings is an encouragement to everyone. Kindly do so, and God will bless you with more blessings. Testimony service will be observed after the song to be given to us by the officiating minister, who is Sister Julie Shokenu. We want you to tell us what the Lord has done for you. No rambling at all. We don't want anybody to praise the devil, but praise Jesus. Two minutes per testimony and make your testimony inspiring. After this testimony, we shall have the special song titled, Jesus is the Friend of Sinners by John W. Peterson. It's a quartet. After that, the word of exhortation. Like I said, Sister Julie Shokanu is our evangelist tonight. After the sermon, kindly make use of our altar. The Lord is always present here to bless. Yes. When the altar area is filled up, you can use your pew as an altar. Jesus has filled the whole of this place. Yes. And when you pray conscientiously, I am sure by the time you leave this place tonight, joy Amen. will fill your heart. Amen. And you will go home with a testimony. Amen. God bless you.
The song for our testimony services, chorus number 100. Chorus number 100. We will sing verse 1, verse 2. Then after verse 2, we will go back to verse 1. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. We have the best friend in Jesus. The organ will give us the coach. Tonight, God did wonderful to me. Of recent, I was called that my uncle died at East. I was crying for that. They called me again that my in law died. I was crying for that. I called my brother. Do you hear what is happening? My brother told me that. Don't you hear that our auntie has died? Uh uh. Which, which one am I going to follow now? This is my only brother that told me that my auntie died. On Monday, I was called that he has died. The world was dark for me. I don't know what to do. I cannot even pray. I go to the elders' prayer where I belong to. I said, this is what I see. Oh. They started praying for me. I wrote to my group leader, the man of God. He encouraged me. He prayed for me. He said, sister, God will do it. I said, amen. All that heard about it, they were telling me, Sister, God will go with you. I will say amen. God will go with you. I will say amen. I started praying. God told me that he will go ahead of me. They have already called me that, that they are waiting for me. All that money that I'm looking for for Lagos, they are ready to spend it with me. I'm not crying that my people die, but what they are going to demand is my problem. I went through, through Jesus, go with me. Jesus took control. As God did it, I don't know. He spent, he did everything. We went, me and only my junior sister. God helped us. We buried my uncle on the 28th. We buried my auntie on the second. My brother was on the sixth. They said, that's where they are waiting for me. All they are demanding. God, even the debt he owes, they saw unless I pay, if not, they will not bury my brother. My junior brother, not say my senior. I said, God, you say you will go with me. Oh yeah, it is time. God stand by me. God did it for me. He bought it in, and my brother was buried. God took us safely and bring us back safely. Glory be to God. I vow my love for this God. I thank God this drink because there is power in the blood of Jesus. When I came to the gospel, I was told to confess my sins, which I did. Jesus saved my soul. He sanctified me. He baptized me with the Holy Spirit and power. Glory be to his name. Since then, he has been all in all for me. He, when I'm sick, he healed me. When I'm in need, he provided for me. There was a time I was having problem on my legs. The, I went for an x-ray. They told me that they are going to do operation. I told God that ah, I will not do operation no, if it is Time for me to go. But Jesus healed this leg. I even wrote a letter that I cannot walk around, but surprisingly, God told me what to do. And I started doing exercise. Do you know Jesus healed these two legs for me? I was unable to move all around. 
Jesus has been all in love for me. He's a marvelous father. He provided for me. He healed me from when I'm sick. He gave me a Christian family that if when we were in need of something, we just go to the altar and tell God in our room, and Jesus will do anything we want. If it's provision, he's there for us. If it is uh, any, it is a problem, God will solve the problem for me. Do you know the, yesterday, God added a year to my life. It was a surprising packet. I didn't expect it at all. But for this God who has been doing so much for me, I've not done anything for him. But I want him, I'm in the last stage of my age. I want God to pray for me. And I want the people of God to pray for me. I still want to work for him. I want to be a, a, a good Christian. I want to be faithful. And at the end, I want to see him. He can do all things. All power belongs to him. Jesus saved my soul. He sanctified me. He baptized me with Holy Ghost and fire. January 1 this year, they just called me that they rushed my mom back from church. Ah, ah, what happened? First day, I said, give phone to her. They said she cannot talk. Ah, okay, let me talk to her. They said that she, they want to do video. That I should see her. She cannot lift her hand. She cannot lift her leg. She cannot do anything. I said, give phone to her. They said, okay. Let me talk to her. I said, they gave phone to her. She said, she cannot hold phone. I said, I want to pray for her. Give, put phone near our ear. Uh, that was uh, what they did. Uh, there is power in the gospel. There is nothing God cannot do. Somebody that said she cannot talk, we started praying. From far off, she said, Amen. Ah, I was glad. Our God can raise dead. There is nothing he cannot do. She started saying, Amen. 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 God heal her. So my, she's here this evening. Our ah, God can do all things. I give him all my life. I thank you because he saved my soul. He sanctified me and baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. I thank God that God always answers prayers. I remember when I was in Aladura here. I was working here that time. I was collecting 8,000 so and 40 naira. That time I told God, God, is this work? Please come and answer my prayer. And I, laid, I told God, I laid uh, three requests to God. That God, please answer these three requests. If you answer it, I will testify. I did, I, I, that was that time I got married, no child, no work, and I was carrying my NC certificate all about. I told God, please, you can do it. To answer these three requests, I can have degree. I will praise your name. Do you, you know that God answered my prayer in the reverse order? He gave me a bountiful baby girl. I tell you that God, that God, God may, may, may say be glorified. After that, God gave me a walk. With that NC I was holding, God gave me work in the, in the, in the, in the, in the federal school. Thank God for that. Now about my, my degree, I said, God, this is our, the third one. How will you do it? I, 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 God, God told me I should, I should wait. But I did not wait. I said, God, I want to have that degree. I went to Janiki. God told me that, no, I should not do it. But thank God that I obeyed God. I waited. Even, I was thinking that maybe we are, I would put me to a uni lag. We were very close to my school. God said, no, I should wait. But miraculously, God took me to a kitty state. As I do, I go to control. As old as I am, although I'm still young, I know I'm still young, but God opened my brain. Because I, I saw myself that, I saw some, 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 some children there, young white ones. But I said, no, no matter how, how at my, my age, I can make it. Go to control. He opened, he opened my brain. Go to control. I gave me 2.1. I said, yes. That's the second thing. That's the second part of the degree. I will make it in Jesus' name. I don't to control. May his name be praised. thank God truly because every day with Jesus is a very, very, very sweet day. 
Jesus brought me someday here to this gospel. He saved my soul. I was a complete wreck, but Jesus turned my life around. He sanctified me, and he baptized me with the Spirit. And day by day, he has helped me. My testimony today says, Jesus answers prayers. There was a big mountain that was in front of myself and my family for the past 12 months, but God did it. That is just, none of his promises fail. He says, ask and you'll be given. We asked and we thank him that he did not let us down. Jesus answers prayers. I want to thank God. There is, there is power in the blood of Jesus. And that power is obtainable at the altar of prayer. Some years back, in my place of work, I had a very terrible trial. That trial led to the termination of my appointment. But I want to thank God tonight that salvation he gave to me is real. And I want to tell you that salvation is real. He saved my soul, sanctified me, and baptized me with the Holy Ghost and fire. Since that time, the Lord has been leading me. So when this problem arose, I came to the Africa overseer then, and in his office we prayed with tears. And he told me, Festus, the Lord who delivered Daniel from the lion's den will deliver you. And I was holding this termination letter, and I said, God, I am on the crossroads. Where do I go? God said, go to the basement, go to the altar and pray. And I prayed. And God said, that same letter of appointment, the sack letter, will be turned to a refreshed letter of appointment. And I really thank God the Lord did it for me. What people thought was so difficult, because when they terminate you from that establishment, there is no way they can take you back. And all the people I told, they said, well, first of all, you begin to look for another work. Why would I look for work? But I told God, this is the testimony of people, but they don't have the final say. Jesus has the final say. And miraculously, miraculously, the trailer we have looked for, for several years, one glorious day, God made it possible for me to find that trailer at first stack. And that was the beginning of a changed story. When my establishment heard that we have had this, they said my appointment should be reinstated. I came back to the employment, and by the grace of God, I retired from it. Glory be to God. I thank God for giving me this opportunity. May his name be praised in Jesus' name. I thank God that um, when my father passed on, God was there with me. He was the father of the fatherless, and he has stood by me. May his name be praised. I also thank God that he gave me a godly mother. May his name be praised. I thank God that he gave me a home. May his name be praised. Though the road has not been easy, but God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He fulfilled this in my life. He has always been with us. He has not left us alone. You know, last week we were asked in our class, we said, how do you know that God resurrected? God did this for me last week Sunday by proving it to me miraculously that he resurrected truly. You know, during this special song, I stepped down of the platform and on my way going for some time, for some years, I was having a swelling on my neck. But of recent, I just noticed that it was swollen, it was um, growing a little and it was so hard and I was not comfortable with it. So I prayed, I said, God, please come and heal me. Come and remove this swelling. God hears and answers prayer. You know, when we take care of God things, God knows how to take care of us. And so I prayed. And as I was going, I just touched that place miraculously. There is power in the blood of Jesus. We are serving a living God. As I touched it, Paul just came out from that place. And I, I, I felt it, the smell was so horrible. And I went to someone, I said, should help me press it more. And the person pressed it. And, the, sw- and the, the, the growth that was there came down immediately. I want to give God the balance of my life. I want you to uphold me so that at the end, both I and my family, I will see him face to face. I'm so glad today because I met Jesus. 
This was the word I said when as a teenager I was confused because my dad was a Baptist preacher, my mom was a strong Christian. So I went between these two churches, but I looked and looked around. I was the same with everyone. People went to church, my friends went to church, those who didn't go, we all did the same thing. So I was confused. But you know, up there in heaven, Jesus saw this teenage girl who was confused and walked into my bedroom. I never knew how to pray, and Jesus taught me how to pray. I started to say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, forgive me. Do you know the joy of heaven filled my soul? I was so happy, I was saying, I've say, met Jesus, i met Jesus. Do you know, if you are confused tonight, you can meet Jesus. Jesus is wonderful. He keeps me happy every day. Even when the devil comes with sadness, God makes me happy because he gives me joy in my heart. Tonight, if you seek Jesus and you are confused, he will appear to you as he did to me in my bedroom. Congratulations to everybody. It's no more news. 
It has been declared, Jesus is passing this way. For your purpose. The students, Jesus is looking for you now. For everyone, Jesus is passing this way to bless us. That is great. No matter your condition, no matter your situation, Jesus will attend to you. You may be a sincere seeker, like uh, Mary Magdalene, that was looking for Jesus. Where is my master? Where is my Lord? Where is my friend? And Jesus said, Mary, she was glad. Jesus will call you by your name today. Even Zacchaeus, and you may be that kind of person. Such a person can be here today, an anti-Jesus, like Saul of Tarsus. Jesus met him. Jesus will meet you too. And you can be someone, aimlessly you are just here, like me in those days. Jesus is for you. Amen. Others, like Bartimaeus, who was just at his business, and Jesus met him. Jesus is for everyone. Amen. He will perform wonders in this place today. Jesus is passing this way Amen. to bless us. Amen. The account of, um, of uh, Zacchaeus, of, uh, of Saul, Saul of, of Tarsus, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, from verse 4. Paul the Apostle, he was an enemy to the cause of Christ. And he determined, let's read verse, um, verse 4. And from, the, from verse 1, and Saul, so, yet breathing out threatens, and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went on to the high priest, and desire of him led us to Damascus, to the synagogue, that if he found any of, of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. That was his cause. And as he was going with his people around him, the Lord Jesus Christ that is passing your way today, met him. And when Jesus met him, the story turned, and Jesus called him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? That was strange. Who is this? Who art thou? Lord. And Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. And if you read true, Jesus gave him instruction. He humbled himself. Verse 6 said, and he trembling. And he followed the instruction of Jesus Christ. And Saul of Tarsus was mightily saved. And he became one of the great apostles. He made great exploit for Christ. At the close of his days, he said, I have fought a good fight. And at last he said, a crown of glory is laid down for me. That's the greatest achievement on earth. Jesus is here. Jesus is here to perform wonders. Somebody like me aimlessly. It was just a family routine. Evenings on Sunday like this, I met myself in the church. My heart was broken. I was frustrated and confused. I was mourning and in sorrow. The testimony service, I used to love the singing, the beautiful environment, everything had no taste. And I was just in the church physically, I was not present. After the sermon, I saw people moving to, to the altar. I went to. And when I got there, somebody who, who had heavy burden, I started to weep. I wept for so long that when I was tired, I wanted to go home. I lifted up myself. I looked at my back. 
I saw the ushers. They killed at my back. In the front, I saw altar workers in my front. And all other worshippers have gone home. Ah! Jesus spoke. You know, Jesus was waiting for me. He said, look, you have wasted your time. They thought you were praying. If you tell me to save your soul now, I will save your soul. You know, at that time, Jesus performed wonders that I cannot explain. He, you know what happened to me? I was blaming God. But God humbled my heart. He made me to just want that salvation. And he made me to believe that he will save my soul. And I buried back my, my head. I said, Jesus, please, save my soul. Yes, that day, the sound of a man roared and filled the whole church. I see the heavenly host came down to say amen. I said, please, I will love you. I will serve you all the days of my life. And immediately, the body rolled away. The sorrow went away. There was peace in my heart. And there was joy everywhere. The, everybody started to jubilate. The joy filled the whole, whole church. I was so happy. And Jesus spoke again. He said, look, I am your dad. Anytime you need the help of your father, Look up to me. That is God. Let me extend that testimony a bit. Like a little above 10 years later, I finished my secondary school. Then I was in primary, primary two or so. Less than 80 years old girl. May God bless the ushers. May God bless our other workers. They did not go until I was blessed. My mates, my colleagues, my friends were seeking for admission, and I started to seek for admission too, with prayer. And wonderfully, God gave me a good one. I had to travel to the place. There was no money. Ah! I look around. It dawned on me that nobody to sponsor my education. I carried my admission letter. I came to the altar like this. I spread it. Jesus! My savior and my father, I want to go to school. There is no money. Come and sponsor my education. I prayed. Jesus spoke again. You know, I was, I was praying for money. He did not start from money. He said, I will protect you spiritually and physically to your school and come back. I will open your brain. You will exile. Students, you are starting your exam. Today, Jesus is passing to make you to excel in your exams. He said, I will provide for all your needs. I was so glad I went back home. On getting home, Jesus started to provide. That is the Jesus that is passing this way. That is what he will do for you. And uh, we talk about Zacchaeus. In Luke chapter 19, Zacchaeus desired to see Jesus. And he had a little problem. He was a man of little stature. That was an hindrance. But he wanted, he was deliberate. He, was, he wanted to see Jesus. He solved his problem. You know, you know who Zacchaeus was? A tax collector. They are very rich, even in present situation. A big man in the society, he humbled himself. Humility is very key for you. If you want to receive from the Lord, he just wanted to see Jesus. If I can see Jesus, I'm tired of sin. I want to get rich. I want to get out of this problem. I don't want to steal again. I don't want to defraud people again. I don't want to extort the people again, Lord. And he ran, he climbed a tree to meet Jesus. And behold, Jesus knew what was going on. He wanted to see Jesus, and Jesus too wanted to see him. When Jesus got to the place, he just looked up. Zacchaeus did not need to shout. 
Jesus said, Zacchaeus, come down. He was so glad only to see Jesus, but Jesus called him that he should come down. I'm going to your house today. When you are going today, you are going with Jesus. When you are going today, you are going to Jesus. Verse 9 says, this day is salvation come to this house. Praise the Lord. Zacchaeus was saved. And uh, there is a young man, slightly, slightly, um, well, disabled. He just saw that the governor was passing through his place on foot with his men. And this man cited the governor. He said, he started to, to plead, governor, please. I need help to please help me. Oh, please don't forget me here. Yeah. I need your help. You know what will happen? The people around the governor just they blocked him and asked him to keep short. Don't disturb the governor. And this man cried the more. Please, governor, help me too. And the governor stayed back and called him by himself. Come here. What do you want? And this young man said, please, I learned a trade. I need equipment. So the governor bought a brand new chair rubber, cha-cha-cha, high quality equipment for him. And not that alone, he helped him to renovate his work area to make it more beautiful and, uh, uh, and okay for him. And he said, in case this your work will not sustain you enough, give me your account number. I will give you a part-time job if you have time to come to that work. And every month, you will have a lot in your account, bag um, always. Wow, a great governor. Someone was like that. You know, this young man's expectation was exceeded. Like Queen of Sheba, when he came to meet King Solomon. Wow, half of what he saw was not told her. I made a little analysis. I could see that Solomon was greater than that governor. But Jesus that is passing your way today, he said to his audience, Behold, the greater than Solomon is here. Jesus our Savior, Jesus our Redeemer, Jesus our Healer, Jesus our Provider is here for you today. Hold on. And uh, in Luke chapter 18, from verse 35, let's read a bit of that. That is the account of uh, Bartimaeus from 35. And it came to pass that as he was coming nigh unto Jericho, a certain blind man sat by the way begging. He was not expecting Jesus. Though he has heard of uh, Jesus, but he, he was just there at his business, a blind man. His business was to beg for arms, to make a living. But he heard the tramp, tramp of people. What is this? And they told him that it is Jesus of Nazareth that is passing here. Hey, my problem is solved today. I'm talking of humility. You need faith. That day, I believe what Jesus said. If you tell me to save your soul, I will save your soul now. And he did that. You must have faith in whatever Jesus tells you to do. No matter what you are seeking for. And this man started to call on Jesus. Jesus Christ. 
Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And uh, people around him, people around him disturbed him. We are around you today. We are not going to stop you. We shall encourage you to pray. And heaven shall send help to you. We are going to pray to you to victory in Jesus' name. And we cry the more. Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus is beckoning to you. Because as he's passing, he wants to bless everybody here today. No matter your problem. I came with lots of problems that day. God solved my problem. He gave me a permanent solution. I did not know it was salvation I needed. He saved my soul. And that was the key to the solution of my problem. Jesus is going to give you a permanent solution today. What is your problem? What are you looking for? The greater than Solomon will do it. And they said that I might receive my sight. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, said, Receive your sight. Today, receive your blessing. He rejoiced. They rejoice with him. We are going to rejoice with you. God is going to bless you. He can do all things. Nothing is impossible for him. Come to him with humility. Come to him with faith. He will solve all your problems. Nothing is impossible for him. The greater than Solomon is passing here. He's waiting to bless you. We are gathered around the common mercy seats this evening where you gave the promise that you will bless. Come and bless tonight. Amen. Lift all burdens here tonight. Amen. Answer all prayers. Amen. Come and save tonight. Amen. Sanctify here. Amen. Baptize here. Amen. Heal the sin sick bodies and souls here tonight. And all glory shall be yours. We pray in Jesus' name.